I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Is your FPV camera out of focus? And if it was in focus, does it keep like coming loose and you've tried hot glue or maybe even super glue and it doesn't work? I'm going to show you one weird trick to keep your FPV camera in focus and stay there. What I'm about to show you is a trick that's really simple, and yet so many people either just don't think of it or, or haven't been shown it. And I found myself sharing this trick with a bunch of people lately, and that's always been my motivation for making videos. If I tell somebody the answer to the same question three or four times, I just go make a video about it. So here's the camera we're going to be working with. It is the Runcam Micro Sparrow. This is actually a really cool cam. I owe Runcam a review of this. Uh, this is the first that I know of anyway, Micro 16.9 camera. So if you're flying with a Dom V3 or an Amway Commander, uh, yeah, if you're flying with one of those goggles with a 16.9 screen and you want a micro camera to go in there, here it is. This is it. It's got the uh, OSD built in, just like the Swift 2. It's usually a really nice camera for if you're looking for a 16.9 micro camera. But that's not why we're here. We're here to show you how to focus the lens on it. And the lenses on all of these cameras basically work the same. You've got the lens itself, and then you've got a lock ring, and there's a threaded barrel, and the lock ring butts up against the, the base to keep the lens from moving. So if you need to adjust the focus on the lens, the first thing to do is to screw it out, and you're going to grip just the lens itself and screw out, and you'll see that both the lens and the lock ring will uh, come loose. Then what you're going to do, I'm going to use these little tweezers because this lens is a little small. You're just going to screw the lock ring towards the end of the lens to just kind of get it out of the way a little bit. The next thing you're going to need to do then is, is actually focus the lens. And the easiest way to do that is to get one of these little adapters. This adapter will let you plug in uh, DC power. You can just use any power brick, the 12 volt, 7 volt, whatever the cameras will, but assuming it's within the camera's range, which run cams these days have a pretty wide voltage range they'll take. Uh, and then you plug in a video cable, just a little RCA video cable, and you can use any spare screen. You can use your television set. It's probably got an input for it. And you can just plug straight into the camera and not have to deal with like putting your goggles on your face, which is a little tedious. You can also do this with your video transmitter and put your goggles on your face or if you have a screen with a RF receiver, that works fine too. If you do this with your copter, you will need to have the battery plugged in to make the video transmitter work and you will need to have your props off because you don't want to be, oh, I wonder how to... Wow, why, why, why did I do that? So here's a random two cell battery I have sitting around. It'll do just fine. I'm gonna just plug it in here and that will power the camera up. And here is the video out. I'm just gonna use this spare screen uh, that I have laying around. And you can see the image is out of focus. And if I, hang on, if I then rotate the lens with my finger, I can find the point where it comes into focus. Okay. Now the distance to the object that you're focusing on matters. If you focus on an object that's close up, then further away objects will be out of focus. And of course, that's not good when you're flying. You need to be able to see far out because you need to be able to see objects coming at you, right? So I like to use a focal distance. I would say a focal distance of about 20 or 25 feet. But to be honest with you, I don't pull out a ruler when I do this. What I do is I just go out to a field and I stand up, you know, a certain distance away from some trees and I try to focus on the trees off in the distance. Not like forever off in the distance, but, you know, a, a roughly 20, 25 feet away. And I look at the leaves on the trees or the branches and I try and turn the camera lens so those are the most in focus that they can be. And here's what I found. There's an optimum focal point where everything from here on in is basically perfectly sharp. And everything from that same distance on out is so far away that you kind of can't resolve those details anyway because it's a low resolution feed. So if you basically, if I see anything in frame that's out of focus, I try and focus on it, right? And and then you need to be able to tell the difference between stuff that's out of focus and could be brought into focus and stuff that's just so far away that you're just seeing a blurry thing anyway, no matter what you do with the lens. And so that's how I do it. 
uh, I think when it's focused right, essentially everything you see should be either perfectly in focus or so far away that it couldn't be in focus anyway. So we're going to find that optimal focal point wherever it might be where things are perfectly in focus or as, as in focus as they could possibly be. And then, man, that's a good looking image. Jesus. And then I'm going to hold the lens at that point and I'm going to screw the lock ring down. Now this is the part where you, people get it wrong. You screw this lock ring down and you try and get it as tight as you can, but you can never get it tight enough to hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it down as tight basically as I can get it till it touches the base. And then while holding the lock ring in place, it's a little hard to do with with this small lock. There we go, that'll do. While holding the lock ring in place, I'm going to back the lens out just a little bit, maybe an eighth of a turn. So now the image is out of focus just a bit. And then I'm going to turn both the lens and the lock ring together inwards so the lock ring snugs up against the base as the camera comes back into focus. And if that doesn't work, I can just back the, can the lens out again. I can take it out and I can move the lock ring just a smidge in any direction to try and, to try and get it to set right. But what I want to do is I want to turn both the lock ring and the lens together. What I want to do is I want to turn both the lock ring and the lens together so they snug up against the base. You can see they're turning together so that at the point that the camera comes into perfect focus, the lock ring is really tightly snugged up against the base. Let me show you that one time with a bigger camera. So this is a lot easier to demonstrate with a bigger camera like the Eagle where you can really get your fingers on the lock ring. So here I'm going to turn the lens outward so that it loosens the lock ring. I'm going to spin the lock ring away from the base. I'm going to turn the camera to find the focal point. I'm going to spin the lock ring back to touch the base. And then while holding the lock ring stationary, I'm going to back the lens out an eighth of a turn or so. And then while turning the lock ring and the lens together, I'm going to tighten it back in and it will snug up and find the focal point. And if the focal point is not correct, just loosen both of them together, adjust the position of the lock ring just slightly and turn them both together back inward. Just kind of keep doing that until you find the exact perfect point where the camera's in focus. Well, there you go. There's your one weird trick for today for how to get your FPV cameras focused perfect, how to get everything you see in focus, and then how to keep the lens from rattling loose, how to get that lock ring nice and tight. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave any questions down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.